Lastly, we take a look at the basic problems here associated with the lenses. We'll take a look specifically at the double convex converging lens and the double concave diverging lens, drawing out the ray diagrams for various object distances. We'll assume that the lens maker's equation has already been completed. The focal lengths will be given in all of these examples. Okay, so we now have the following expression to work with, of course. And also, by the way, the magnification is the exact same expression for lenses as it is for mirrors. That shouldn't really be any surprise at this point. It's not really necessary, however, for us to go through a derivation of that expression. Okay, now let's take a look at the first of these last two examples here for today's series of lectures. Given the following values of DO, find DI, the magnification, and draw the ray diagrams for a double convex converging lens with a positive focal length of 10 centimeters. Okay, now we're going to have three object distances here to work with, and then we also have to draw the situations as we proceed. When we draw the situations, we'll of course just be using shortcuts as we go. You do need to know how to draw these diagrams. Okay, first of all, we just follow the math. In part A of the example, we're given that the object distance here is 20 centimeters. So then therefore, we first of all plug into the expression here to find the image distance di. So 1 over do plus 1 over di is equal to 1 over f. And now we just subtract the 1 20th to the other side to find the image distance di. Okay, so over here on the right-hand side, we do have now 2 20th minus 1 20th, which is 1 20th. Take the reciprocal here now to get the image distance di as positive 20 centimeters. Now, from the sign convention, the positive sign here for the image distance means that the image forms on the opposite side of the lens from where the light is coming from, and the light is coming from the object itself. Okay, let's find the magnification. It's negative di over do, which is negative 1. So you end up with a real inverted image where the size of the image is the same as that of the object. This is a situation that I haven't drawn yet, but using shortcuts, it's easy to construct. Here's then how to draw this out. Okay, so here's my double convex converging lens. Okay, here's the optical axis. Let's say that right here is one focus, so this distance is 10 centimeters. Here's the other focus, so this distance is 10 centimeters. And then we're given here that the object distance is 20 centimeters, so 10, 20 is about like this, like so. And now what we do is we choose two light rays that are coming off the tip of the arrow. Okay, the first light ray, we always just draw parallel to the axis itself, like so. And then using a shortcut, we just draw this to the middle of the lens. And then if you recall from one of my earlier diagrams in today's series of lectures, the way that this refracts out the other side of the lens is that it refracts through the focus. That is, like so. Okay, and now what about a second light ray? Well, for a second light ray, what we just do is we draw the first light ray backwards. We draw a light ray that comes from the tip of the arrow through this focus on this side of the lens and then starts to refract through the lens. It does undergo a refraction here and here, but when it does refract out the other side of the lens, it refracts out the other side of the lens parallel to the axis. The reason for that is because it's basically just the first light ray backwards. The easiest way to draw this as a shortcut is to just simply do the following. Draw a light ray from the tip of the arrow and passing through this focus, and then draw it to the center of the lens. And then what we do is we refract it out the other side of the lens parallel to the axis. And then notice that the two refractions pass through this point. This right here is where the image of the arrow forms. So you end up then with an image distance here of positive 20 centimeters. That means that the image forms on the opposite side of the lens from where the light is coming from. It's an inverted image, hence the negative sign in the magnification. And the size of the image is the same as the size of the object. You can see this in my lenses demonstration video in the following way. Hold the lens like so, and then you look at an object that is distant in the room, like, for example, posters on the other side of the room, as I demonstrated in that video. And then if you look at the image that forms carefully, you'll see that it's inverted, it's real, and it's actually in front of the lens, for example, like so, if you're holding the lens in this manner. Okay, and now what we'll do is we'll see what happens here calculation-wise and diagram-wise 
as I now take the object distance and I make it smaller and smaller. So now we're going to take the object and move it closer and closer to the lens. Okay, let's see what happens then as I do. Okay, but now in part B, the first thing that we do is we just follow the math. So once again, we take the object distance, in this case 10 centimeters. Okay, notice that the object is actually being placed at the focus here in this example. And now we have 1 over DO plus 1 over DI is equal to 1 over F. Notice that the 1 tenths here subtract out. So you end up with 1 over DI is equal to 0. Therefore, DI itself is equal to infinity. It's undefined. Therefore, there's no image. Notice that the behavior here so far of the double convex converging lens is starting to look similar to the concave mirror. If you recall with the concave mirror, when I placed an object at the focus, there was no image. Same thing here. Now, how do we draw this? Hey, well, once again, here's my lens. Okay, here's my axis. 10 centimeters here, 10 centimeters here. And now the object, like so, is placed at the focus. Okay, what we do is we take a light ray once again parallel to the axis like so from the tip of the arrow, draw it initially to the middle of the lens, and then refract it out the other side through the focus like so. Okay, and now what about a second light ray? Well, it can't go from the tip of the arrow through this focus here like I did earlier because that light ray is not going to hit the lens. So what do I do now? Well, instead of what we do in this case is we take a light ray from the tip of the arrow and we draw it down here to the center of the lens. And then it refracts through the lens like so, and then out the other side like this. It basically does this. It goes bang, bang, bang out the other side. The easiest way to draw this, however, as a shortcut is to just literally draw a straight line through the center of the lens. Like this. Like so. Once again, this is not quite what happens, but it is the net effect of what happens when I do refract the light correctly through this surface here and through this surface here. Regardless, however, take a look at these two refracted light rays. Notice that they're parallel to each other, so they don't converge, nor do they appear to diverge from another point. This then means that there is no image. Okay, and then lastly here for this problem is part C. Let's take the object and bring it closer to the lens still. In this case, we have an object distance of five centimeters. As we'll see, this is a magnifying glass for part C. Okay, let me do some erasing. Okay, so for part C, the object distance is given to us at is positive 5 centimeters. Let's do the math first. So 1 over DO plus 1 over DI equals 1 over F, and then solve for DI. So take this guy and move it to the other side, like so. And now if you do the math here on the right-hand side, this is 1 tenth minus 2 tenths for negative 1 tenth. And now take the reciprocal here to get the image distance DI negative 10 centimeters. So the negative sign here means that the image forms on the same side of the lens from where the light is coming from. In other words, the same side of the lens as the object itself. Okay, let's find the magnification. It's negative di over do, which in this case ends up being positive two. So you end up with an upright virtual image that is magnified. This is, as I said, a magnifying glass. Here's then how we draw it. Okay, so once again, here's the lens like so. Okay, and then I've got my two foci. Let's see, right here is 10 centimeters. Right here is 10 centimeters. Okay, and then for the object distance of five centimeters, if this was 10 centimeters and five centimeters is about right there. Okay, so there's my object. And now I take the same two light rays that I used in part B of this problem, I do that here as well. But these two light rays, when they emerge from the lens, will not be parallel to each other. Instead, they'll be diverging. Here's then what it looks like. 
First light ray from the tip of the arrow parallel to the axis like so, refracted through the focus out the other side. Okay, and then the second light ray, just draw it like so, straight through the center of the lens like this. And then these two guys are diverging from each other, so then therefore they appear to come from back here behind the lens. The image itself formed as a distance of 10 centimeters. The negative sign means that the image is on the same side of the lens from where the light is coming from. 10 centimeters is actually at this focus right here. So then therefore, let me just do this. I'm gonna draw the image immediately like so, and then therefore these two refractions here and here, they look like they're coming from this point, like so. So you end up with an upright virtual image that is larger than the object itself. Once again, this is a magnifying glass. I demonstrate this for you also in the first video, or the first demonstration video in today's folder on lenses demonstration. So make sure that you take a look at that film if you haven't already done so. Okay, so to finish here for this particular problem, the double convex converging lens behaves somewhat similarly to the concave mirror in the sense that it gives you multiple types of images. We now move on to the double concave diverging lens. When we do, it sort of behaves similarly to the convex mirror. That is, it only gives you one situation. So for that reason, I'm just gonna do, for my final problem here of today's series of lectures, just one example of the double concave diverging lens and draw its ray diagram. All right, so access that problem and write it down in your notes if you haven't already done so. Okay, so for this diverging lens, the focal length is a negative number, negative 10 centimeters, and we're just given here an object distance of positive 20 centimeters. Okay, let's just do the math first. So I've got one over DO plus one over DI equals one over F, and then move the 120th here to the other side. And then regardless of what the object distance is, 20, 10, five centimeters, doesn't matter, well, because the focal length is a negative number, this then means that the image distance that you calculate here is always going to be negative. So the image is always going to form on the same side of the lens from where the light is coming from, that is from the object itself. So it's basically only gonna give us one type of diagram. That's why I'm only doing this problem here for one value of DO. Okay, let's go ahead and find the DI, however. This is negative 2 20ths minus 1 20ths, so negative 3 20ths, like so, and then take the reciprocal here to get the image distance of negative 20 thirds centimeters. Negative 20 thirds is negative 6 and 2 thirds. Okay, then we'll find the magnification. So negative DI over DO, and this ends up being positive one third. So you end up with an upright virtual image that is small compared to the object. I also demonstrate this for you in the lenses demonstration video. Okay, it is only one type of ray diagram for this situation. You haven't seen this as of yet. We'll draw it out, of course, by using shortcuts. Okay, so here's the double concave diverging lens like so. Here's my optical axis. A focal length of 10 centimeters still, so right here like so. We'll say that that's a focal length here of 10 centimeters and then also over here on the other side. And then we're taking our object and we're placing it 20 centimeters away from the lens, and that's over here. Okay, this is, as I said, a diagram that you haven't seen yet. How do we draw this as a shortcut? Well, once again, start off with a light ray parallel to the axis like so, and then draw it to the center of the lens. And then remember from one of the lectures from earlier today, this light ray, when it refracts out the other side of the lens, it looks like it's coming from the focus back here. So then therefore, the easiest way to refract that is just to simply do this, like so. And then for a second light ray for this situation, we actually choose one of the light rays that we did earlier for the double convex converging lens problem. That is a light ray that goes from the tip of the arrow to the center of the lens, refracts a little bit, and then refracts out the other side like so. It basically does this. It goes boom, boom, boom. Once again, the easiest way to draw that, however, is just to draw a straight line like so, right through the center of the lens. And then these two diverging light rays here and here, they look like they're coming from this point right here, 
Therefore, right there is the upright virtual image that is small. The only thing that changes in a problem such as this, as I say, take the object and move it closer and closer to the lens, is that the value of the magnification becomes bigger and bigger. It will still be a number that is less than one, however, and the image distance itself gets less and less in the sense that the image just gets closer and closer to the lens. But other than that, it's always basically the same situation. Okay, this concludes the lectures here on lenses. Today's shirt was acephalics.